Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part five of my C video tutorial. Today, this tutorial is going to be all about structs. And a struct is used when you need more than one piece of data to describe one thing. And you may say to yourself, well, why not use an array? Well, very often, an array would work. However, remember, an array can only hold one data type inside of it. So whenever that doesn't work, that's whenever a struct will work. If you haven't seen any of the previous parts of this tutorial, I refer to them in the upper right hand corner and you should probably check them out. And of course, all the code is available in the description underneath this video. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, basic setup, text editor over here and here is my terminal and I'm just gonna start going into it. So let's just create ourselves a struct. Specifically, let's say we want to properly define a dog. Well, what are some things that we will need to define our dog? Well, I'm going to first create a constant here, and that's what C-O-N-S-T stands for, and it's going to represent the dog's name. We don't plan on that changing, and that's something that we'd like to have stored inside of here. Another thing we don't plan on changing is the breed of the dog, so let's put that in there. Well then, what are some other ways or things we can describe in regards to our dog? Well, let's say average height. And there we are, and let's say I want that to be in centimeters. See, officially now it can no longer be an array, unless those are strings, of course. And then we're going to say average weight in pounds. And then don't forget this, very, very important, put a semicolon down there. Okay, so there we are, we just created a struct. So let's go down into main now and try to use it. Now to define a new dog, what we're just going to simply do is type in struct dog, and then we're going to say, give it a name, like Cujo, for example. And there's Cujo, and Cujo is a Saint Bernard. And let's say that Cujo is 90 centimeters and 264 pounds. There we go. And basically, we're going to create this kind of like an array is created. In essence, what we're doing here is we're just going to define our new dog and pass all the values specific to this dog. And then, of course, we have to use struct for now, and we have to give it a variable name just like any other variable. And now, it's going to be very easy to pass all this information to, say, just one individual function. All we need to do is go Cujo. Now in the past, what we'd have to do if we wanted to pass all this in, semicolon of course, is we'd have to take all this information and pass it to the method or the function. That's not good. So now we just have that. So that's one of the reasons why structs even exist. And then we can come up here and actually start creating this method. Let's say we don't want it to return anything and it's called get dog info. And whenever you accept a struct, you would do struct and then dog and then you have to give that variable a name and I'm just going to call it the dog. And let's just throw a printf inside of here and let's start working with this. Now since the struct is actually created in a way that's very similar to an array, you might think that what you would do if you wanted to say get the dog's name down here is that you would come in and type in the dog and then an index value. But that's wrong. That doesn't work. So sorry about that. What we're going to do instead to get all this information is use a dot operator. So what I'm going to do is just go printf, throw that in there, and let's say I want to get the dog's name. Well, the dog's name is a string up here, see? So we're going to just treat it like a string, throw in another new line, and then to actually get the name, we're just going to go the dog followed by name. That's it. And if we want to get any of the other values, pretty much going to do the same thing. So if we want to get breed, type in breed, that's a string, and then we're just going to type in breed down here. We don't need the stars. And then if we want to get average height, there that is. And then we're just going to take the average height, copy that, paste that in there. And of course, there it is. And of course, since it is an integer, change that to D. And then we could put in centimeters. And then we could go and get average weight, just like that. Change this to D. Maybe throw in pounds after that. And then go average weight pounds over there and file save that, and then this guy is going to execute it for me. So let's execute it. And there you can see name Cujo St. Bernard da 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 da. So that's how you pass the information over and how you print it out. Well now you might be thinking to yourself, well exactly how is this information or this data stored in memory? Well basically the struct is just going to define a template for all of your data. Then a struct variable, when that is created, is going to define the memory needed to fit said data. 
and in a second we're going to see how the memory is laid out. It's quite fixed, by the way. So in essence, these are going to be pointers to strings, as you see right there, while this data is just going to be regular integers, so they obviously are just going to point directly at the data itself, while these are pointers that then point to the strings themselves, okay? So that's how a struct is basically set up inside a memory. So let's go back into the code and actually look at the memory addresses where this data is being stored. So let's say, for example, that we create another dog struct and let's call it Cujo2 and let's actually give it the data that is currently in Cujo. How exactly is that going to work? Well, let's create ourselves another function and what it is going to do is receive Cujo and Cujo2 and print out the memory addresses to show how they differ or don't differ. And let's change that to uppercase M's and copy it. Then we can come up here, void doesn't return anything. And then once again, struct dog the dog. I'm just going to copy this. And then here I'm going to go name location in memory. And if I want to print out that location, since this is a string, it is going to act as a pointer. So I can just change this to D and it's going to get the memory address for me. And do exactly the same thing for the breed, breed location. And now for the height and weight, that's going to be a little bit different. Let's come in here and just say height and weight location, leave these as D's, and then of course we're going to go average height, copy that, paste it down here, and average weight, paste it down here, and since these aren't pointers, we're going to go in here and put the ampersand sign in front of them, and now we can save that and execute it. And here we can see name location, 91402028. Well, what is happening with the other Cujo? Because remember, we created two Cujos. Well, actually, it's pointing to the same space in memory. And you can also see exactly the difference in between the name and the breed and the amount of bytes, 28 and 33. So there's some information on how this information is stored in memory. So now I'm going to create another one. So you may be asking yourself, well, can you put a struct inside of another struct? Yes, you can. So let's say that I decide that I want to store some favorite items for my dog. How do I do that? Put my semicolon in there like this. Let's say that I want to store favorite food. And let's say that I also want to store best friend. Well, got that there. Then what I'm going to do also, so we don't have to keep typing out struct over and over again, there's something called type def. And what type def allows you to do is shorten struct dog, this whole thing that we've been typing over and over again, to just dog. And it's real simple to use. All you need to do is go type def like that, and then take dog, the name you want to refer to, and put it at the very end. There you go. Now you can type in that and it saves a ton of time. You're going to see that in a second. And then to get this guy right here to be used down inside of here, very easy indeed, we're just going to go struct dogs faves and then I'm going to say favorite things. And there we go. Now you got a struct inside of a struct. Now we can go down inside of main and create another dog struct. Remember we don't have previously we were typing in struct dog. We don't need that anymore because of type def. Now we can just type in dog and let's get a new dog called Benji. And there he is. There's Benji. And let's say that he's a silky terrier. And let's say he is 25 centimeters tall, 9 pounds. And then how are we going to put the struct inside of there? We're going to put curly braces inside of there. And let's say that Benji likes to eat meat. And Joe Camp is Benji's friend. And then put on both of the curly braces. And there you go. That's how you would create a struct inside of a struct. Then you may ask yourself, how are we going to get access? To that data. Well, I'm going to create a method called get dogs favorites and I'm going to pass Benji inside of it. Copy that. Come up here. Get dogs favorites. Void. Don't need to do anything different. Just go now. I, well, now I can go dog. Remember I was typing struct dog before and there we got dog. Throw in a new line. And then to get my data in my struct, what I'm going to have to do is chain my dot operators. So let's say I got a printf here. Throw that in there. Let's say I want to get a string and this is going to be the dog's name and I'm going to say loves and meat is going to be returned there and his friend is and I'll throw another new line in there and then to actually get the dog's name I'm going to say the dog dot name just like before and then to get the dog's favorite food what I'm going to do is type in the dog followed by another dot favorite things which is in the struct. See, favorite things is the variable name in the struct. You wouldn't type in dog's faves. Type in that. 
and then go through all the favorite things. So food, and then finally the dog, favorite things, and friend. And that's how you would do that. Execute. Benji loves meat, and his friend is... Uh-oh, forgot to put in my little S. There we go. Benji loves meat, and his friend is Joe Camp. See? There it is. Pretty easy. So now you may ask yourself, how do you pass information to a function? Well, I'm going to create a function, and it's going to be called set dog wait, and it's going to get past dog, the dog, and it's going to get past new wait. So we want to monitor Benji's wait. Well, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to go the dog average, I'm going to mess up on purpose here, just to show you this, is equal to new weight, and then I'm going to go print F, print out that weight, weight was changed to D, and I'm going to go the dog, average, weight, pounds, and that looks like that would work, right? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to come down here, and we're going to go set dog, weight, pass Benji in, just like you'd think we would, and let's say Benji shot up to 11 pounds. Well, then what we're going to do is go the weight in main, and then go Benji, average, weight, pounds. It looks like I got everything right. Execute. The weight was changed to 11, so whenever we were up here, see, the weight was changed to 11, and so it was changed the way it was supposed to be changed, right? Benji was passed in, and then 11. There you go. However, weight in main is still 9. Remember, Benji originally was 9. So what exactly happened here? Well, basically, it's going to print the old weight because when a struct is passed to a function, a new struct, none of the ones that is currently created, a new struct is going to actually be created, stored in memory, and then the values stored inside of Benji are going to get put there. Then they're going to go up into this guy. That's why it's going to seem like it worked, like it showed right here. But in essence, it's a new struct, not the old struct. So how are we going to fix that? Well, the way we fixed it in the past, we're going to use pointers. So let's come back down, and I'm just going to get rid of this guy right here so that doesn't print out on the screen. And I'm not going to change this much at all. I'm going to go into set dog weight, and instead I'm going to change that into set dog weight PTR, which is a reference to pointer. And then because I want a pointer, ampersand. There you go. Didn't have to change much. Then I'm going to leave this exactly the same and not change a single thing. So of course that means I need to come up here and change our other older weight method that didn't work. Just come in here, bonk that inside of there. Now anytime, like I talked about in the previous tutorial, you're going to be receiving a pointer. You have to put in a star to be able to access the actual data that's being thrown in there, leaving this exactly the same. You're going to do the same thing with the dog down here. However, when you are dealing with structs, you have to surround them with parentheses. Just a rule. There's actually another way to do this, which I'm going to show you in a second, but that's what you do. And then whenever you want to refer to this information and print it out, remember, again, parentheses, parentheses. You can just think of these parentheses saying, yes, this is a struct or whatever works for you. Go like that, save that, bounce over here, execute it. And you can see both places, the weight was changed to 11 and the weight was changed inside of a main to 11 as well. So that's how you do it with pointers. Now, remember what I said, there's another way to do this stuff. And that way is we could actually replace this and get rid of it. And specifically, when you're using data inside of a struct, you can go and draw like a little arrow inside of it. Sort of like, in essence, what this means is the variable named average weight pounds in the struct, the dog. So we can do that as well. We don't need to change anything else. Execute. And you can see the weight was changed to 11, and the weight was changed to 11. So there's a whole bunch of things about structs. Up next, I think I'm going to cover unions. Of course, all the codes available in the description. Please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.